Hello everybody, welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and today I was interrupted. That's right, I had a bunch of plans for series I wanted to film and even the channel supporters had come up with a few that, well, they've turned my eye, but then, then this happened. What is this delightful pop-up that is now on my main page that seems to have deactivated a ton of mods for people and generally brought about carnage, ah yes. It's an unannounced and unplanned Civ 6 update, supposedly. We now have an official challenge of the month. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are discerning Civ 6 supporters, you are adequately wonderful, devourers of the highest quality YouTube material, so you already know that on my Discord where there's almost 14,000 delightful Civ 6 people all gossiping away about a delightful game, you will know that every month we do a Discord challenge where we pick a Civ, and then there's a game with a bunch of challenges that you've got to achieve. Well, it looks like the developers saw the delightful Discord and went, we want a bit of that as well, so here we go, the official challenge of the month. Age of Abundance. Pericles, Greece, I know nothing about it. So, should we do the old Ursa so try? Should we just absolutely go totally blind into it, have one go and then go, wow, that was fun? We absolutely will. It's always more fun that way. Never plan, never prepare. Always improvise, that's what I say. So, join me as I press this for the first time. Uh, let's see what happens, shall we? Well, here we go. It seems to be a late game start, seeing as we have the barrel of muskets. I think that's either Renaissance or Industrial Era, isn't it? It. Age of Abundance is upon us from now until December 12th. Test your leadership skills in the first of our new series of in-game events by achieving a culture victory as the Greek politician and General Pericles. Culture victory? As Greece? Well okay then. You start with two cities and a thousand gold. How valuable. How kind of you. Close to valuable resources and on the same map as other Civilization 6 players around the world. Oh, how delightful. No barbarians? What are our hoplites supposed to kill? I guess actually if we're starting later into the game, hoplites don't even get a roll, do they? Oh, well, we've still got the Acropolis. We've still got the Surrounded by Glory. I'm hoping this should be good. Oh, hello. Given all of these boosts, okay, we definitely have started later into the game. I think this is a Renaissance era start, isn't it, based on this? Yes, it certainly is. But there appear to be no governors. I also can't see any loyalty. That means this challenge has no DLC. Excellent. <laughs> Okie dokie, well, I guess that means everybody can play it. Well, I've had a lot of people in the comments recently ask for me to play with no DLC. I still don't know why you want that, but here we go. And now, for an important update. Having been expelled from Oxford University, Ursa Bear had met a man named Paul. Oh dear. Luckily for Ursa Bear, he had amassed 40,000 subscriptions. These beautiful little signatures attracted the attention of none other than Gilgabro. Scared off by the majesty, Paul retreated and left Ursa Bear to his way. Searching for new subscriptions, Ursa Bear traveled to the coast, where lo and behold, it looked like more people. More people for subscriptions. Alas, it was not to be. Ursa Bear, our sweet, innocent bear, is now trapped, harassed by giant crabs. Will you save Ursa Bear from crabs? Will you help Ursa towards his goal? Thank you so much. Back to the video. I'm assuming Gathering Storm. Yep, Gathering Storm is also not switched on. Perfect. So no weather events, no governors, no barbarians. This is a very peaceful game indeed. It looks like it's an eight player game. Nobody is starting with any culture. So if we get right on the tourism super quickly, we should be good. Although the problem will be the great writers. Well, we're already up to Renaissance era. So we've missed out on a lot of those early game writers. Standard speed. Prince difficulty. Ooh, Oh, interesting. I haven't played on an easy difficulty in a long time. Oh, that'd be quite nice. Well, for once, I am not going to leave a safe file in Discord for this one because you can just press the button on your console and it should load it up for you. But let me know in the comments. Let me know how you get on. This, this should be a lot of fun. So looking at this, the first thing that I am seeing is that we have no improved tiles around us whatsoever, but we do have some very good tiles. There's also a bunch of wheat, which means that a watermill should be very effective indeed. It's standard speed, so we've got to build things out at the, the usual place we would normally be doing. Now my unique Acropolis district, this is a good district indeed. It gets one culture bonus for an adjacent city center and then plus one for each adjacent wonder and district. Only getting one for a wonder rather than two. That's, I always found that an interesting choice. I would have preferred the plus two, but never mind. The way I'm currently seeing it is if I were to pop there and then there, 
I could then pop an entertainment complex down between them. There's no real point because I don't get a huge bonus from entertainment complexes. They're not like regular theatre squares, so maybe that's not worth it. It might be better to see if we can just found the districts around us as we have been normally. Okay, well, whilst I work this out, what I'm going to do is quickly take the monarchy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, there's so many other things. There's no diplom... Is there a diplomatic victory? No, of course, that's all switched off. So the governments have all taken their old abilities. We have the old version of monarchy, which weirdly actually looks like the new version once Greece's ability has gone through. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's whack in serfdom. I want good builders, very strong builders immediately. Looks like all the lenses are turned off as well. I'm going to pick up maritime industries so that I can get out to sea and explore and find people quickly. That's always a really good idea if you're not sure what to do. And I'm going to take chivalry so that I can build a horseman or two. That would get a lot quicker out there. Now, scouting is going to be important, making sure we find all of the world as quickly as possible. I do like that as an option. Do we go straight for writer points? I don't know if it's worth it. I could go for writer and profit points, but as you can see, we are already at 240 points needed for a great person. Renaissance Lyra is a lot harder to get great people. I don't think it's worth it. Diplomatic League absolutely is worth it. You should always put that in on any game you play. Let's go urban planning plus two gold from trade routes. That'll give me something right from the start and the merchant confederation. It's a weird government choice, but we will change it as soon as we do something better. Argos is the smaller city. I don't actually mind that at all, you know. We'll let Argos grow a little quicker, but I will focus on just going for a builder and a builder so we can try and work everything we can. Okay, so some of my lenses are working. Some of the mods that I play with. We've still got Envoy Quest, but it hasn't switched everything off. That's good to know. I'm going to focus first on improving every single tile. The faster we can do that, the quicker we will explode into this new age. And I'm going to start off by going cartography so that we can get out to sea. We also would like humanism, ideally. I tell you what, not having barbarians is quite fun because I don't have to worry necessarily about immediately going for army. Oh, that's right. Industrial zones don't get the adjacency from green districts. I was thinking about trying to make some sort of fidget spinner down below me, but no, it doesn't make any sense, does it? I have to unlearn. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to unlearn everything we've been taught about Civ. This is going to be a strange game. Here we go. As Argos grows and we now have more settlers out, or more builders, I should say, I feel a little bit more secure about my start. What do I want to do now? Would be good to know about where the troops are, but do I really want a scout's map? I mean, actually, there's no barbarians, are there? Let's get some scouts out. Why not? I know we've got a load of gold. I am thinking about what is best to do with that. I just haven't chucked myself at the gold just yet. Okay, Argos, I think it is actually quite a good idea if you do go for the unique district as soon as we can. Is it still good to pop it there? Or do I try and sync up with a harbour adjacent setup? I'm, I'm probably going to put districts around this location, aren't I? So I'll, I'll build it to the south. I, I don't think that's too bad an idea. And with my gold, I'm actually going to build the watermill because that improves the food around Athens and will help me to grow quite nicely. And with the gold, well, you know what I'm going to do? Settler spam. Yeah, I can't get Magnuson, so there's no worrying about that. But that's two more cities immediately. Okay, that's not bad use of my first bits of gold, I don't think. I, I think that's that's not too bad at all. Okay, we've got lots of space to our south. Looks like we can go and settle to the north as well. We'll go and find Mogadishu. We still haven't technically met them, which is strange, but is fair. And let's build our second unique district on this tile. Okay, there's more space than I thought. With a cultural victory, it normally makes sense to throw your cities slightly closer together so that you can put more theatre squares. I'm probably going to go one, two like that. And we're going to go and settle this one first to go and pick the Niter up. Mogadishu, we are first to find them. Bam, and we have suzerained them. So our traders are now immune to being pillaged at sea. To that, I say, lovely. Something that might be worth picking up. I don't know if this is for everybody or just for me, but some of the luxuries on the map, they don't appear to be showing properly. Mogadishu actually has two of them. I think they're both tobacco, but you can't see them. It's worth keeping that in mind. There may be more for you here than you can necessarily see at the beginning. So my tribal village, 20 faith. Oh, that might help get me a pantheon, actually. Oh, it's all of the old pantheons. Oh, I love them. Goddess of festivals. I used to quite like this one. Extra food from tiles. Oh, that's that's actually really tasty if you've got a lot of that stuff. Goddess of the hunt. Oh, it's only plus one food from camps. It's not the production anymore. I was thinking I had a few there. Never mind. Culture from pastures probably is a good way of just building on culture. I, I like the idea of going for culture because I do get a bonus to it for every city-state I control. So it's worth having more. I think I might go God of the Open Sky. Like, we've got one, two, three, possibly four all being worked in my capital here. So yeah, it's a lot of extra culture. I'm throwing down a campus 
between these two phaser squares. I quite like that. We're saving my envoys. I have a lot of envoys and I want to just spread them amongst all of the different city states that I meet on this map. Here is city number three, Corinth. It's got a little bit of nitre coming into the city, which is wonderful. Of course, it only counts as being two sources in that way. But again, we can get the Acropolis down. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to rush a bill? Or I can just afford to buy a builder. Okay, that helps me just to get the city active as quick as we can. Let's make use of my card in my government and double build galleys now from Argos. Oh, okay, right. There's a canal city possibility. However, that might actually sacrifice some of the space I have to settle. Let's keep an eye on that. I don't know whether that one will be worth it or not. What's in the tribal village? Metal casting, square rigging, oh, the double bonus. Very good. Just looking at this area. You've got to watch hills. I always forget that it's only hill tiles that we can build our unique district on. So settling there might not be a good idea, you know? What I would do instead is probably settle on that tile and then aqueduct over to the mountain and make that my unique district like that. That's probably not a bad idea. Let's do that. So my tribal village, a recon unit, another recon unit. We've got so many. Okay, that's all the land we have in this area. Okay, Corinth is probably not necessarily the best place because if I have to stick a city there, there's no unique district for it. But we didn't know that. We didn't know that. So it's okay. My first galley. Quick, go. Go out into the world. Find me some more land. To say I desperately need it would be an understatement. All right, we want to actually make use of this land up to my north, I think. I do like the idea of just a tiny little canal, but no, I can't build anything on that iron. So let's instead settle there and then unique district there. Harbor probably on this tile. Does it make sense to not just dive bomb into culture? You know what? I think it does. So we're going to get rid of Merchant Confederation, Canvasseries and Urban Planning. And I'm instead going to go for Metocracy, which is plus one culture every specialty district. Just a nice little bonus there. And then Aesthetics, doubling up on our unique districts. And after that, I might pop in Settlers, but I'm going to keep Urban Planning just for a second, just while I'm building things like a campus up. That feels like a good choice for me right now. Looks like we are stuck on a small island. We're going to have to go and find some of the world if we want to go and trade with it. Oh, Sparta on a very difficult to get to little peninsula of land. There's something about that I quite enjoy. Let's get the harbour up first before the unique district in this city. I need the lighthouse and I keep forgetting housing wise. I think we get quite a lot from starting era. Oh no, is it, is it the three granary? Do we get a free granary? We get a free granary in the monument every time we settle. Of course we do. Oh, I love late game starts. They're so much fun. You don't play them enough, ladies and gentlemen. It's always worth playing them. They're just they're just a lot of fun. How good are the trade routes available? Five gold per turn to Mogadishu. I mean, they're not ideal. I was thinking about whether or not it'd be worth rushing a commercial hub, but given what I'm seeing, it's, it's doubtful as to whether or not that would actually be very helpful. I think it makes sense to use Athens as quite considerable production to start cranking through some settlers. That's what I'm gonna do. Second galley. Okay, you disappear in the other direction. We are pretty landlocked. I'm actually quite happy that we did go for cartography. A tiny island to the north. That's not a bad settlement opportunity. Time for a harbour. No harm in trade routes. The Renaissance era. I thought that's what we were already in. Clearly not. Clearly not. Urban planning. Okay, we are building settlers now, so colonization is going to be popped into my city. The capital can crank the settlers out a little quicker now. Civics wise, let's go for diplomatic service because trade routes to Mogadishu then will be quite good for me. Congo, hello. Honored to meet you. Where are you? Are you just across the water? Ah, you may be. Okay, we found one person though. Is that Congo? No, this is somebody else. I think that may be Rome? Byzantium? Somebody with a purpley color. They want a horse and they're going to pay decent money for it. <laughs> yeah, go on then. Now on lower difficulties, the AI is typically a lot friendlier. So I wonder if we can try and make good friends with them. It is Rome. Hello, Rome. Honored to meet you. Love some of your hospitality. Yes. What did I find? Of oh, a boost to exploration in that tribal village. Okay. That's not super useful, but we'll take it. Actually, look at this. We can sell nitre for a ton of gold. Sell iron for a ton of gold. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm selling it all. What next? Um, Printing, mass production. It's all quite useful. I'll go printing. I like the extra tourism from writing, although we're a little bit off that. We have 600 gold. I'm going to buy in my first amp theater and we're going to just try and unlock as many of those as quickly as we can. As we settle, we'll find more resources that we can sell, do more trade, get more gold that way. I'll start throwing my trade routes towards people like Rome soon as well. Why have I got to pay you so much for open borders? Really? I don't want this. Oh, <laughs> they'll take a surprise war. Again, I don't want one of those. I mean, could we go rogue? Could we avoid the culture victory and just go for a pure domination victory? <laughs> 
<laughs> even though it's turned off because we know that there is that secret victory type if domination's turned off and you're the only person remaining quite tempting isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's quite tempting. Arabia. Hello. Honored to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. Good all round. And you'll buy my horses. Of course you will. So diplomatic service. This is one I do want into my government as quick as I can. Or is it? Oh no. Vissel Banking doesn't exist in this. Well, of course it doesn't. Does it exist somewhere else? Arsenal of Democracy. It's over there. Of course it's all slightly different, isn't it? All right, fine. I'll take the gold from a trade route either way. Take the beautiful tribal village which is a reformed church boost okay and we'll settle city number five and immediately plonk down our unique district it's beautiful it's gorgeous there we go arabia is now friendly as is congo and we'll send an embassy to rome and see if we can get open borders with them it's gonna cost me a little bit but it's worth it i want to make friendship with everyone i can argos it has a harbor amazing let's get the lighthouse going let's get the amphitheater going after that my little cities are starting to grow nicely we've got another settler two more on the way don't really know how many this game is going to want me to build but we'll play around with it until we find out a hanjo diary now that is very well protected eight envoys in there we'll save up for now i could take it over but i don't know if i want to i mean i will full housing from water is useful but none of my cities are actually they haven't hit the housing cap right now so i think i'll take the culture from the amphitheaters and we'll just wait there for now until i've explored more of the map and i can work out whether or not there are better to city states for me which they could be yosemite oh that's a nice that's a very nice wonder looking there maybe i could go and settle that there's no loyalty in this game remember loyalty is not a thing egypt honored to meet you yes love to sample your hospitality france honored to meet you as i said we're collecting a lot of friendships here as we move around the map okay the settling has come along nicely you know what i realized the trade route actually comes along from the harbor not the lighthouse that's interesting it's probably been like that for some time but i i just never realized that it was like that in the base game interesting just gonna flood my empire with a few builders and then we'll get to work on seeing how quickly we can build some tourism here because tourism is definitely the issue zanzibar protected again this one is easier to get to so i'm actually going to see zanzibar gives me a chunk more culture per turn yeah i know i know you're not gonna like that but look i am the envoy king so let me have them please i wonder if engineers are a good idea they might be you know it might be worth it to work some engineers up brazil wanted to meet you who is it that's producing the most domestic tourists out of everybody it's arabia arabia so far oi don't take over zanzibar from me they're keeping me happy i'll have you know city number seven this one is on dyes excellent again get that unique district down as soon as we can is there a, something for unlocking the fact the world is round on this map there's not what we have before era score there was no need to do it feels so alien so this is a spare die excellent okay now we can actually build ourselves a second amphitheater which we're going to immediately go and do bam so we're building up these great writer points now maybe i should have had the writer card in from the beginning of the game i'm still debating that one i don't know whether or not it would be worth it or not there's a lot of tribal villages on this map though like so many of them my scouts have been very very busy okay let's go for the writer points i've not learned my lesson but i think that is definitely the way to go and merchant confederation for a bit let's get the gold into my nation 51 per turn i think a couple of harbors and some extra trade routes and things will definitely help me on that front russia wanted to meet you love some of your hospitality amsterdam which one was amsterdam again oh this is what hunza became wasn't it ah yes i remember that so turn 235 we are now starting to get eight writer points per turn which is pretty good i'm tempted to make athens start to do projects to really boost through once it's got all the builders out <laughs> the useful thing is just having a hub that's producing builders these are being scattered to the four winds and that is massively helping all of the growth of my other cities around it they're all picking up a lot of production a lot of improved and work tiles it really does help later into the game research agreement oh yeah forget those oh we're still settling look at that this is city number eight let's just put that unique district down as soon as i can i think kamasi gold routes to city 
these days. It's still as good as I remember at the Kamasi bonus. They are now a priority because then I can send loads of trade routes to Mogadishu and that will help me hugely on gold and culture. Another amphitheater. Yay. All the writers are really starting to flood in. Please, I need you all as fast as I can. Galapagos Islands. Oh, that'd be a nice place to settle. Look at that. Quite far away from me, but it would be a huge amount of science per turn. Nan Madol. Oh, these city states just get better and better. And this one actually hasn't been improved or taken by anyone. Oh, okay. Okay. There, yeah, there are some good culture city states. It's almost like the game has put like gold and culture city states as the only ones quite deliberately. Feels like that's what's happened. I don't mind that. Fun bit about these challenge games, isn't it? When you get things that are slightly skewed in your favor. That's friendship with everyone, by the way. I can't afford open borders with everybody. That That is proving problematic, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. Now, might as well just get all of my cities kicking along and making things like art museums slowly in the background whilst I'm waiting for other stuff to happen. It makes sense for me, as well as improving all the strategics and anything else we can get. Now, what's the most gold I can get from roots now? What is out there? Athens to Cairo. Oh, lots of Cairo roots. I mean, this would give me a little bit of extra science as well. And the tourism. I mean, I'm getting 25% extra on zero right now. So, you know, don't get too excited, but at least it's a thing. The good thing is that no one is really jumping on culture like crazy. I mean, some people are building theatre squares, but the highest I can see is Egypt and Congo at 33 per turn. It means that my tourism threshold is still remaining quite low. Now, I don't know how long that'll last. The AI might decide in a little bit to sort of go, okay, right, we might as well play seriously now. But until that happens, until that happens, it's looking really nice for us. The shipyard. It's now unlocked. Going to unlock Renaissance Wars. I'm actually thinking about the best ways that I'm going to make tourism this game. I'm going to go for opera and ballet, get a few more envoys, get myself a musician, points, the ability to get grand opera. And then we're going to go for conservation because getting tourism from walls, I think that is actually going to be deceptively useful for us this game. Oh yeah, that's right. You can't put lumber yards on rainforest in this, can you? Huh, that's so weird. Oh, might as well chop the rainforest down then. Even more reason to chop it down. I, I never needed a reason beforehand. I was always really terrible at doing that. Now it just works. The industrial era. Hmm, this is going to make the writers even trickier for me to earn. I have to keep an eye on that one. Public works vote. I like builders. Builders are always very handy and we're going to pop back in Diplomatic League briefly because I want to pick up Nan Madol, although it's just been picked up by somebody else. Okay, fine. Well, I'll just use these envoys men to go one, two, three, like that. Just drop a load of envoys, double them up. And after that point, there's no need for the card so I can remove it permanently. Let's get opera and ballet now. Oh, an alliance. All right. Yeah, go for it. Let's let's have an alliance. I think that opens the borders, doesn't it? It certainly does. Let's start opening alliances with as many people as we can. Oh, there's actually no limit on alliances. I love that because they're typeless. You can have as many as you want. You know, we're finding out new fun things every time. There's an amphitheater, by the way. That's uh, We're way above 100 culture per turn now, which is lovely. We'll start picking up great writers soon. We're up to 11, probably 12 points per turn. This amphitheater just finished as well. Get an industrial zone in Argos. If I can try and build any wonders, I will. The production is a little bit low at the moment. Vilnius. When you enter a new era, earn one random inspiration. I prefer having more adjacency from my theatre squares, but I guess that's fine. Opera and ballet. That's a lot of extra culture. I'm going to get rid of writer points. We're just going full culture. I, I think this is going to be really handy for us. And I want the limes card back in because we're not far now off getting conservation. Here we go. Nan Madol. Two culture for every district on or next to coast. That's quite a bit. I was on 150. Now I'm on 180 culture. Oh yeah, I love Greek culture. Religions are now being founded. Feed the world is a little bit different. Everything's a little bit different. Man, we would have to relearn this game, I feel. We really would if we were to play with that DLC more often. Oh, you're lucky we're allied. <laughs> I was looking at that and thinking, oh yes. Our first great writer, the only Renaissance one we're going to get, Edgar Allan Poe is up next. Oh, he's almost twice as expensive. I think it would have been quite tricky to get more. However, look at this. Great works are worth four tourism, which is now 
right. That's really handy. So they're worth a little bit more tourism than I expected them to be. Good to know. An art museum is worth eight culture. Even more than that because of Greece's bonuses. So this is what it's really looking like. Okay, we need 29 tourists at the moment and Russia's gaining one every four turns. I'm currently gaining 10 tourism from a single great work. If I were to pop another one down like so, it's now I'm gaining 20. You times that by seven based on how many people that I'm getting. And I'm earning 140 tourism per turn. It's going to take eight turns for me to take one foreign tourist and four turns for Russia. So currently they're gaining twice as much, but that is only with a single writer. That's not too bad. I'm going to start building walls up. I think the tourism from walls is going to be quite handy this game. Here is Raj, slightly better version of Merchant Confederation. A little bit less gold, but more of every other stat. And every other stat is, is better, I think, personally. Look at this, two extra culture for every art museum. I just watch that multiply with all of the art museums that I'm starting to build. Oh, 240. Natural history. Getting up there, aren't we? Archaeologists are now available, but conservation. Oh, extra tourism from all of my walls. I don't have a huge amount of walls, to be honest, but I've got enough, enough to make it worth it. And I'm still building things like medieval and renaissance walls, chopping them out. Five turns. Limes is always a fun card for this sort of thing. How's my next writer going on? Oh, it's ages away. I'm going to get a artist soon. And that, at the very least, is exciting enough. And we've got enough space for two more amphitheaters in Sparta and Sion. Oh, Sparta has no production whatsoever. I'm not actually sure why I would be surprised about that, but they just don't. Catholicism is giving choral music. I decided not to go for a religion, by the way, because I didn't want to lose tourism for not having a religion that was the same as anybody else. I probably could have gone reliquaries. Everyone likes a good reliquaries playthrough, don't they? But uh, in this particular case, I didn't. Oh, an amphitheater is worth 12 culture. Oh, that's a lot. And uh, Brunei. Oh, look. Conveniently, it's another mercantile city-state. Who would have thought it? One, two, three. I'm just going to pick them up immediately. Up to 339 culture per turn now, which is pretty good. There is a tiny gold bonus in having that as a city-state that I'm suzerained by, but it, it's really not a big one. The modern era. Oh, my Lord. We are racing through these eras. There are no great writers available at all. They've got the first artist. There is still an industrial era artist coming after this, though. So, okay, that's not too bad. At least we've got some options. But let's start putting down things with extra tourism. You can see we're now up to 40 tourism per turn because we just gained a lot from our Renaissance walls. So I'm now earning 50 with most people. Times by seven, that's 350, which means we're now gaining a tourist every four turns or so. And Egypt is the biggest problem for us at the moment. They're gaining every sort of three turns. So, okay, we're going to have to do more, but we're slowly now catching up. I think I'm going to rush for cultural heritage here. 100% tourism from great works of art and artifacts. That'll be quite fun. Another amphitheater. Is that all of them? Have I built an amphitheater in every city? I have now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Yeah, that's right. It's a shame I don't have more great writers, but we've now got the capacity to wield one in every city and Renaissance walls are still being built. Got a bit more gold coming in per turn as well. Now the traders are slowly becoming useful. Now let's see how much this one theater square project in my capital increases things by. How much is one project going to do? Not a lot. <laughs> Not a huge amount. I feel like my capital could do something a little bit more effective. Chichen Itza is one option. Forbidden City is quite fun. Hermitage? 34 turns. That's, that's a lot of turns. Let's build an industrial zone instead. The atomic era we've entered into. God, we are rushing through this pretty quick. Got a few spare envoys now, which is quite fun. Let's pick up Kamasi. One, two, three, four like that. It'll make trade routes for city-states an awful lot better now. And Bandar Brunei, everything all in. Yep, up to 450 culture per turn. Oh, it's a lot of culture. Heritage tourism. I think this is worth putting in. Metocracy is fun. I'll lose a little bit of culture to take that out, but the extra tourism, that will help. I've yet to pick up my first tourist. We are still waiting on that one. My tourism is now rising. Slowly, but it is rising. Oh, I've got coal. Bet that'll sell for a lot. It does sell for a lot. Nice. I think once my capital has done with its workshop, I am, yeah, all of my cities are going to start just spamming theatre square festivals. It's going to take them a while, but I need the points as much as I can. Funny how these things come in and out of importance, but I need as many great works as I can get. And now it looks like, okay, I'm just going to pick up Edgar quickly, but Emily Dickinson, a modern era writer now, 660 points. Oh, 10,000 gold. That's a lot. That is a lot. The Telltale Heart up to 81 tourism per turn. We need Emily Dickinson in as quick as we can get her. Culture's not very useful to me 
me anymore. I'm going to just go straight to points now. Let's go symphonies and writer points. Okay, this is better. I'm getting about 100 tourism with everybody right now. That means I'm gaining about 700 per turn, which means I'm gaining a tourist more than every two turns. And Egypt's only getting one of... Yeah, okay, so now we are catching up. Let's keep putting down these great works. All of my gold now is being saved up, and we're going to start buying in great writers as <laughs> quickly as we can. Oh, I love this thing. Yeah, but the game used to do this hilarious thing where it would never renew friendships. You just have to <laughs> let the turn roll over, and then they'd ask you for friendships, and then you'd be like, okay, done. So just wait. None of these people will accept a friendship with me. Just, just wait. They will literally all come crawling back within a turn. What did I say? Look, the turn is just rolling over, and suddenly every single one wants to be friends with me. They are lucky. Lucky I'm in a forgiving mood. That's all I'm saying. So one thing I'm wondering is I don't really want to go to a higher government because I'll get a huge tourism penalty, but does it make sense to unlock any of these fun cards? What, what sort of things do we get from these cards? New Deal. That would be quite fun. I don't know how many cities that would actually apply to. Arsenal of Democracy? Maybe. I think I'd prefer to unlock professional sports. So we'll, we'll do that first. A great person. An admiral that gives me an armada. That's not very handy, but it's cool nonetheless. We've got an armada now. Excellent. An artist, which is amazing, and a musician. Oh, this is the double that I've been looking forward to. Right, let's get that great work immediately in and my first piece of music. It's not a huge amount of tourism, admittedly, but I think I can, yeah, 200% that with Space Race. That's quite cool. What's that spy doing in my capital, eh? Egypt? Watching you. I know what your spies are doing. We're allied, and in this game, that means that I know everything. Everything. I'm building Bolshoi, but I'm wondering if that's the best thing to do right now. Should I have gone for Holy Sites? I'm thinking maybe Holy Sites, because then I could have gone for Conservationists. Hmm, did I miss a trick there? I might have done, you know? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to build a few Holy Sites and see if we can just get ourselves some extra tourism this way. And we've got a lot of cities that can do it. Not a lot of production at all. We go turn 294 and we've just got to Space Race, which means I can get satellite broadcasts out. Instead of public works, again, just maximizing the amount of tourism we're generating. Social media now, 50% tourism. That's a nice boost. We'll work towards that. We have a lot more faith per turn coming in now. So hopefully we'll be able to get a couple of conservationists in and we've got another great writer next turn. It's ticking along. It makes me realize, though, back before all of the DLC, when you got a tourism victory, there were so many more things you could do after the DLC than before. Rock bands, a lot of the wonder strats, there's a lot that isn't going on here that you actually look back and you think, huh, yeah, there is a lot missing, isn't there? Oh, yeah, and I forgot how expensive naturalists were. 1,600, yeah, maybe that was not what we needed. I think reliquaries. Reliquaries is probably the way to have gone on this game. There's a lot of religious units sitting around. We could probably do the old usual, you know, just if, if you get, get those relics as fast as you can, triple tourism, when the AI doesn't have any tourism or any culture to resist you. I think that works doubly well a lot of the time. Here we go, though. Online communities. That's a huge chunk of extra tourism. Flight. We don't have any improvements that generate culture, so not super useful, but well worth keeping an eye on. More great works of art, though. That is useful. Katsushika is up next, along with Beatrix Potter and Felipe. Oh, Felipe is really, really handy. Speaking of, hello. Let's quickly get Bolshoi back on the menu. Can we finish it quickly? Oh, it might be worth just flipping my government around first before we do use the charges. I can put about 600 into Bolshoi. Yes, it is worth just waiting a sec for that. Okay, the musician points are fun, but Skyscrapers is now going in because we have the two charges to use. Here we go. Bam. Perfect. I think this is going to exactly give us what we need. Bolshoi Theatre. Two randomly chosen three civics when completed, which is good if it wasn't for the fact that I've missed out all of the governments I didn't want, so I'm probably going to get those rather than future civic. But it also has space for a great work of writing, and more importantly, a great work of music. Oh, we actually got globalization theory. Okay, I take that back. That's really good. E-commerce. Oh, that's a huge chunk of culture. Uh, sorry, production. Here we go. Bam. That's a good chunk of extra tourism per turn. Nice. We have trade routes to almost everyone now. Our tourism is really starting to catapult. I just need Egypt. Egypt is the tricky one. Let's pick up cheeky shipyard quickly. Bam. There's steam power and radio is next up. Radio gives me seaside resorts and broadcast centers. More music. Job plan. Fortunately, nowhere for you to go just yet, but don't worry. We'll, we'll get to you soon. Oh, Brazil has actually got their own great work of writing. That's 
really, really good. We want them to do that. It sounds ridiculous, but I would rather the great works were in the game and then I could buy them. It all depends on how much they value them. Probably quite highly. Yeah, unfortunately so. We are now dominant over France. It's our first one and we are gaining, I would say, about two tourists per turn at the moment. So we're slowly catching, but we need a lot more tourism. Okay, Brazil will sell them to me. I just needed to save up more gold. Done. I've bought the two great works of writing from Brazil. That does the double of bringing their culture per turn down, as well as my tourism up. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, that's made a huge difference. That's made a huge difference. So as I fast forward the turns at the end of the game and just slowly crank down to my victory, I'm now thinking about this and it's like I was saying before, I would be really interested to come back to this in my own time at some point again, because there are several things that I could do to make this even more optimized than before. I think going for those initial renaissance great writers is a really, really important thing. So making sure you get down your districts much quicker and then running a bunch of these projects before they disappear. There was something like five of them and we missed four. There's no point putting 960 great writer points into HG Wells if you can get some of the renaissance ones for about 250, 260 points. That's four for the price of one. Huge, huge difference. I think going really quickly for a religion, that would be a very good move if you could go reliquaries. I don't even know if reliquaries is an available religion on this, to be fair. You may notice that all of the icons at the top and the look of things have, have, have changed literally in the middle of a sentence there. It, it just crashed while I was talking and I had to reload it. Fun fact, apparently, if you load a save up from within the game, it turns all of your mods off. But if you start the game from scratch with your mods turned on, then your mods will stay on. But little, little fun fact for you there. I mean, look at this. Look at this. I have to do this all by hand now. Oh, it's even changed the color of everyone. <laughs> Oh, I love Civ. I think having more cities, more cities is absolutely essential. There's loads of space on the bottom of this continent, at the top of this continent. There's an island above me. Ideally for a normal culture victory, I would probably go for about 20 cities. And being honest with you, because I saw the fact that it was Prince difficulty, I didn't really jump on as many cities as I probably should have done. But you know, that's my own fault for being a little bit blasé about the whole thing. That's probably what I should say about that. I think you could easily shave 50. 70 tire yeah 75 turns off what I'm doing probably something along those lines you just have to attack the tourism a little bit more aggressively to say the least oh yeah I forgot how much broadcast centers cost before the patch that was absolutely crazy how much they used to cost oh wonder tourism remains basically rubbish I don't think wonder tourism is going to win you this game at all seaside resorts might we have a look at the appeal of our land there is enough appeal for some sea is it going to be breathtaking minimum appeal of breathtaking yeah so there's not a many we can put down, but there are some. The other big change I would make, the other big change I would make is I would go more for archaeologists than I would do artists. Getting artists is actually very difficult in this. I would have absolutely gone for more archaeologists had I thought about it a little more, which I didn't. It's all about speed, isn't it? The quicker you can get great works, the quicker you can get that initial bout of tourism, the faster you're going to win this game. I've enjoyed it though. It's been fun to play a simpler game of Civ, although it does make me realise just just how much the DLC has introduced to the game. I mean, that's sort of a compliment in a way. The, the way that the game has really been pulled together, especially in the late game, there's so much more to do in the late game. As soon as electricity appears, not having rock bands around, conservationists being so expensive. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of limiting this at the moment. What can you do? Oh, broadcast center, there you go. Look, I've got an actual, actual broadcast center down. I wasn't sure that would be possible. Yeah, reliquaries was available. Aha, oh, you know what I think? I think reliquaries and Mont Saint Michel had difficult is it to build because is there floodplains on this yeah floodplains on marsh yeah there is a town there is a town not in the capital but you could easily rush Mont Saint Michel get some relics up put another 10 cities down stack up that early game tourism as soon as you could I think seaside resorts getting more science I didn't get anywhere near as much science as I probably should have done that very much limited me in some ways war of the world Ooh. if you dear audience could do me a small favor if you have a go at this let me know on my discord come along to discord let me know share me the save file share me pictures i want to see what you did what could i have done differently because this is this has done nothing for me except make me scratch my head in a good way i'm not thinking i'm not thinking what what could i have done what could i have done more really leaning into these city states and going for more harbors and commercial hubs i can't help but feel like that would have been a very good idea as well big thing about science is i forgot how strong computers was in this particular version of the game 100 percent tourism across my empire that would make this a lot quicker a lot quicker being able to save up thousands 
thousands and thousands of gold to just buy things like broadcast centers en masse, that would be quite good as well. Trying to stop the AI getting great works as well. The, the more of the early game ones you pick up, the less of that you've got to worry about, I think. This sort of thing helps as well. National parks. Good chunk of tourism map 13. Oh, just in case you were looking for ways to increase your tourism more, I can also plant some more forests in this area to create some more spaces. Faith was a bit of a problem for me. We could have picked up merchants like Melita and before that Sarah Breedlove who would have given tourism increases for trade routes. I mean that's all really good but it's just a case of waiting isn't it? You press end turn and end turn and eventually your tourism will overtake the Prince AI. Good thing about this challenge, don't need to worry about it too much because nobody ever really seems to get over a hundred culture which is quite nice. Look at that, we earned a Hall of Fame badge. That's exciting. Oh no, something addictive for me to have to think about getting every month now. Oh dear, I was unready. Buildings constructed, look at that, cities founded. It should have been, I, I should have really got to about 20. I think that was the big mistake in this. I stopped making districts as well. I kind of basically just started pressing end turn. That was my big thing. Great people was solid. Culture was, I mean, we were playing Greece. We were always gonna have the most of that. Faith should have been much higher. I mean, look at Brazil, really doing well there. Science was looking pretty decent. I was kind of the bottom of that vote. Score, I was always good on score. Wonders, only one wonder in that entire game. And there we go, that's it. We now know what this mysterious button does. It was actually genuinely quite fun. It's a little bit simple, but I think there's a lot of optimization that could be deployed upon that challenge to really make it interesting. And actually, when you strip away the DLC, it does teach you good habits, like the importance of settling lots of cities and getting those early game great people before the era goes too far into advance. The problem about Greece, you have so much culture, the era advances very quickly. And congratulations for getting it to the end of the video. Let me show you my Hall of Fame. Let's have a look. What do we get that's a little bit extra? As you can see, yes, yes, I absolutely have got every leader. Of course I do. Don't see anything here that's out of the ordinary. What have I actually won? So culture victory I've got 98 times. <laughs> that's ridiculous. 30 diplomatic, 83 domination, 37 religious, 66 science, and 15 score. Most of those I will be, and you know, I'll admit, we, we had a challenge a few years ago back on the channel where people submitted their end turn save files. And because it kept rolling over, I, I triggered quite a few score victories. It's, it's also why if I have a look at Portugal, you can see 18 out of 26 games. Most of those are not mine. I cannot claim credit for those, but yeah, we've, we've won a lot of games. Three, three, two. Who do we reckon we've won the most games with? That's a good question. Nine times with Russia? Nine times with Bull Moose? Oh, 10 with Trajan. Oh, there you go. Eight with Old Vicky. Eight with Hungary. Eight with English Eleanor of Aquitaine and three with France. Oh, I mean, arguably that's up there, isn't it? When you combine the two. Well, it doesn't count really because we don't count French Eleanor. Ah, oh, 10 times with Byzantium. Yeah, I mean, that was always going to be up there, wasn't it? Almost 15,000 barbarians killed. 18 and a half thousand builders. Strongest unit apparently is my archer. The weakest unit the warrior it's kind of early game combat really isn't it you lose more warriors than anything else 161 nukes fired that seems quite low battles fought 195,000 actually this is good units killed 30,000 units lost 4,000 that's not a bad ratio considering most of these are scouts and religious units and warriors seemingly and when people say oh us is so so warry look at this wars declared 1,800 wars received 3,700 I have declared one war for every two thrown at me I if anything am peaceful in this game. Oh dear, 100 citizens for my largest city. We did that very recently, didn't we? 4,723 cities founded. Chiefdom, my most active government. I think it's because you basically just start with that. 8,300 cities conquered, 41 cities lost. I like that ratio. That's a fun ratio. And Taxus Maximus, that was a uh, that was a Byzantium run, wasn't it? 1,900 and 1,591 followers, I should say. One, religions founded, 1,000. I've almost founded more religions than wonders. That's mad. And there we go. Age of Abundance. I found it. It was here. It's got its own badge. Yay. Oh, I need to come back to that. I feel like there's 148 turns. We can do a lot better than that, can't we? We can do a lot better than that. Let me know in the comments. Do you want to see me take this on again? Or is this not your cup of tea? Right, I've been dawdling for too long. I've got to go and film something else. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let me know how you get on with Discord and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, 
Portland, Clint Tennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!